Welcome to The Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today I am thrilled to engage in a conversation with our next guest, an intentional, determined, and inspiring creative whose work is rooted in uplifting and connecting culture and community. They are the founder and creative director of Band of Vices. Additionally, they boast an award-winning acting career, have a TED Talk on the way, a book just, you know, fingers in multiple pots. Please welcome the returning and the great Terrell Tilford. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be back. I, you know, I was like, well, I've, I've never been invited back to a podcast somewhere. So, you know, I was like, well, I guess I ain't pissing nobody off the first time. So I guess we're good to go. <laughs> and, and the thing that's really funny about it, right? This is almost two years to the date where we initially talked. Yeah. We had the initial pod. Yeah. And um, so definitely seeing all of the really cool things on the gram and even on LinkedIn and just on the website, just seeing sort of your work since the last time that we chatted and the work with Band of Vices and your sort of expansion, because I'm seeing new titles and all of that stuff. I was like, OK, shout out, shout out. Um, so before we kind of get into the main stuff that I kind of teased there a little bit. I, I want to give you know you the floor to to introduce yourself and 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 that's the thing that I enjoy doing because I think there's a lot of strength and power in it like how people present themselves. Um, I always use the sort of um, comparison when someone introduced me, they'll say, "Oh, I've heard influencer, I've heard this, I've heard that," and I was like, "I'm just a guy with a microphone," you know. And I, I like to see where people present themselves and how they describe what they do and what their background is. So, if you will, floor is yours. Hmm. I had to, I had to, I was like, you know what, let me just go to my, one of my uh, Instagram or something to see what <laughs> I've written recently. Uh, one, I'm Terrell Tilford. I'm the founder and creative director of Band of Vices. This is my second uh, fine art company in almost 30 years. My first gallery was Tilford Art Group. And that ran until 2010. I took five years off, rebranded as Band of Vices uh, in 2015. And you know, really, the way I, I, I really see myself is just uh, while my bio says I amplify artists and enrich brands by creating visionary pathways to uplift and connect culture and community. That's correct. I, I ultimately consider myself a social advocate for visual artists and other artists as well. It's important for me to use my voice, use my platform, however that exists, to really do what I consider cultural work on behalf of ultimately thought-provoking, fearless, and unapologetic artists. I love it. I love it. And um, so, and, and as, I, as I touched on a, a little bit earlier, that you know, we, it's been a couple of years since we we've last chatted, and as I've seen, you know, sort of the the changes and, and updates, and just time passes, right? And so, could you speak on sort of maybe the 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 evolution, or like sort of what's been new over the last few years in terms of you know the mission, the impact around like underrepresented voices and the creative communities that you're you're working with and you're working to support through your work. I think the the greatest uh, journey in these past couple of years has really been honing in that much more intently on what our focus is. And so our relationships with whether it's other brands, whether it's like the Getty Museum, uh, Geffen Playhouse, the Lakers, uh, something like that, it's just gotten really, really... I don't want to call it intense, but just that much more intentional, that that much more specific and really going, how are we best using our platform to fulfill the greater mission? Yeah. Um, I think when we last spoke, we had just moved into the building I'm in now, which is 5,000 square feet from our building across the street, which was 1,000 square feet. And we may have been maintaining both during that time. And then unfortunately, just as a result of economics, what have you, we had to go ahead and let the smaller building go. And so while we're in this bigger one now, you know, we've been able to align ourselves with 
you know, a number of uh, productions and and other brands and really. God, it's weird, but, you know, it, it's almost a sense of while you still need to do exhibitions and sales to pay the bills, um, we've also just done some things, a lot of things that we knew weren't going to make any money at all, that we just felt like it was important and significant to do that work. It's important to show certain artists just because they have a strong voice and they have a futuristic voice as well. You know, it will be a time when people will catch up to them you know, which, you know, I don't necessarily concern myself with in terms of where where we are in the now. But I believe that you have to show artists and you have to do things. And if you have a certain platform, if you are able to do it, you have to do things that are out of your comfort zone, but also to do things that historically may be out of other people's comfort zones as well, so that they go, oh, shit, wait a minute, I, I would have never expected them to do this, or I've never had this experience, or what is that about? I'm curious. And to bring people into the building, into the fold, or if we're off-site somewhere else, in a way to, again, experience something greater than they may have experienced previously. And to me, that has no economic, that has less of an economic value than a social responsibility. I think, I think that's a, that's a really good, good point there. And, you know, at, at times when I'm, when I'm doing this and I have these, these conversations, I do these, these podcasts and we're coming up on 700 interviews at this point wow. Yeah, in four, in four years. And, you know, you, you have these conversations with folks and they're like, how are you monetize and how are you doing this and how are you doing that? And you should put it behind a paywall. And I was like, these are things that are going against the ethos, my values and so on. And, you know, I've, I've had conversations with folks that will, you know, who are in sort of the, you know, sort of the social justice. Some, some of them are politicians, but it's more in that I work within the arts sectors. And, you know, you'll, you'll hear like, you know, this might be, might not be a good economic driver or good in this way. It doesn't, you know, it's going to be a loss, if you will, but it's probably the right thing to do. So I'm always curious as to how does one, and maybe, maybe get your take on this, how does one parse through through that? Is it sort of that, that courtorial sort of approach of, I have a feeling like my gut saying this, or what is it for you when it comes to making those sort of decisions? I think it's a, uh, it's a cross between... You know, I, I really work from the heartbeat of people and experiences and their art as well. And sometimes you just you just have that that sixth sense about someone, or you know, um, you just believe in them, and you just go, "Damn, you know what? The timing on this is probably not the most optimal time for them." But if not us, then who will? Mm -hmm. And to me, that's a that becomes a social responsibility um, that I have to kind of balance with everything else. And you know, when I get with my my team and we sit down and go, okay, these next two months might be a little rough, but but when we think about the greater picture of what we're doing and why we're doing it, um, it does have its own value and. And yeah, it's 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 a challenge, um, but then you put up exhibitions that you just know are going to be a go, yeah. and they may not, you know. And you just go, well, you know, we we put all of our effort into that, so why can't we put a you know uh, a similar level of value into things that we know won't have an economic, you know. Uh, upside to it in the short term, you know? Yeah. And it, it, and one of the things I'll say is, as I, I kind of lead into this, this next question, because I think it aligns is, you know, when, when I go back and think about that, that first interview, um, that, that, that we, that we had, and I just remember sort of this, this influx of just, you know, bad advice is showing like Baltimore artists, like in a completely different coast. And, it was just so uniquely aligned with what I was looking to do, amplifying sort of our our people here. 
And, you know, you'll, you'll probably like this. Um, you know, I believe Monica's work was was there, Monica Kegwu. And Monica uh, did a portrait of me in my studio. It's it's great. And um, so can you can you speak on some of the just just maybe one or two like examples of like really milestones or like memorable moments over the last few years when it comes to like yeah we absolutely were six months we absolutely were a year in front of people even talking about let's say the you know baltimore artists it's like now people are talking about it but you guys were early you know you no know, i just i just came back from miami for basel we were uh exhibiting at context art miami and you wouldn't believe how many people rolled up on us that were like yo y'all have put a gang of baltimore artists like on 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 game or whatever and i was you know you know we can only take credit for a very small part of it i just say you know what i said don't sleep on baltimore they got it they got you know a dope system up in there what have you but then we also had you know a great curator out of baltimore thomas james come through you know with you know slings and arrows with a whole you know with a whole group of crew of artists as well so i definitely want to shout him out and give him you know his props for that as well and you know there's god there's just been so many different artists over the years that have just you know went so many different ways you know i i think in my most immediate you know, recollection is, you know, probably like Victoria Casanova, whose solo show we just recently did, well, about four months ago, show called Paradox, her second solo show. Um, but, and, and I'll get to my point, but in, in sharing her work, even at uh, in Miami, you know, so many people were connected to, yes, her artwork, but they were also connected to their story. You know, this is a young woman who less than 10 years ago was locked out of her apartment. She climbed the scaffolding five stories up, you know, to get in. There was a window open. She jumped from the railing to the window to try and get in and she didn't make it. And she fell five stories and she literally broke every bone in her body. And, she, you know, for someone that was originally trained as a dancer, the doctor said that they were going to have to sever her leg, which fortunately they didn't. Uh, her pelvis was crushed. Her spine was shattered. All sort of brain, you know, activity and attacks as well. And she taught herself how to draw in the hospital. Hmm. And here she is 10 years later, um, sort of using that trauma, but in a real uh reinforcing way for herself to to redefine the notions of the the female physical form in contemporary artwork and she's saying that you know don't count out the the duality or the multiplicity of how complex the female form is and and she draw, she does these oil paintings and then she does these graphite on paper with oil paintings of the body contorted and twisted and this and that. And while it may not look perfect according to art standards, mm -hmm. it just has its own beauty yeah. to it because she has, she's re-owned for herself her body. And then she has these, she draws them perfectly in their contorted ways. And then she scratches out the faces and put like these little Crayola or, you know, what have you, like eyes and mouth on that make, they call them like monsters. And that's the psychological component that she's saying that carried her through her rehab, re, her rehabilitation over these years. So when you come across an artist like that, who's young mm. and who's thinking the way that she is and she's as talented as she is um you go i got to do something with them i'm just i selfishly just you know love the work and just you know actively you know want to do something and you know that's one of those shows that you know you put it up and people come in and they're just absolutely just blown away yeah. just just you know, just really, you know, and there have been a number of shows like that. But what I'm most, I think, sort of proud of 
it was interesting when people down in Miami walked into our booth and while we had the smallest booth in the fair, it felt like the biggest because one, we were on a corner and it was just vibrant. It was energetic. And the number one thing, you know, people would come into the booth and hang out and they'd be like, and we were showing three artists and they were like, man, the energy in here is just like crazy. And that's the same comment that we get in, in the gallery here. You know, people, the number one response that we get, you know, and we get it eight, 10 times a week. And it's always a surprise. And it's just so dope. People can be here. And at some point they'll be like, man, it just feels good to be in here. It just feels good in here. And I was, I was just always like prayer hands, like, man, thank you that, you know, that however you're moved, however you're touched, however you're compelled to, to, you know, engage the artwork, community, whatever it may be, that you have a sense of belonging for yourself in the spaces, whether it's a booth in Miami or a gallery here in LA or whatever. And that's part of really the ethos of what, you know, part of our mission is just, you know, just building something, continuing to build something in a way that people, they just, they, they, they essentially take a sense of ownership with it. Like, this is my space. This is, this is where I come to get healed. This is where I get come to get fortified, you know, those feelings. It's, it's great. And, you know, it, it's, and I, I want to get your take when it comes to like your word, when it comes to band of vices, when, you know, you, you speak with someone and they're giving you sort of their take of what the mission is and what the value is and just what they're, they're getting out of sort of the work, the great work that's happening. Um, because I, I recently had a conversation with a curator we were just talking about this, this podcast and I was like, I hear anywhere from you're doing this, you're doing light work, your your style is like this, and I'm just like, all of it is all of it is valid, but all of it is not what I'm absolutely like shooting for. So, what are what are some of the the the, the things that that you're hearing about your work when you encounter like you know artists like that might come over to your booth, that might come to the gallery, that you're crushing in this way, you're really doing this, these, these sort of. Um, first person anecdotal sort of success stories? It's always appreciative. You know, we get a lot of love, man. Um, we were in Paris two months ago for Aka Art Fair. And this is, a, you know, our first big international art fair and going around and, you know, making a point to introduce myself to other galleries and curators, what have you. And then, you know, you mentioned Band of Vices and this was probably let's say 40%, maybe 30, somewhere in there. But people were like, oh, my God, oh, your band of vices and that sort of thing. And, you know, so many people were like, man, I just love you guys' programming. I just love your programming. And again, the work that we do is so hard and requires so much. And, and oftentimes, you know, the economics don't add up to the effort. But knowing, not knowing that you're touching people the way that you are and then ultimately learning of ways in which you are impacting the culture and the broader culture at hand that's what keeps us energized that's what keeps us going and that's that's the part where you know we just remain humble you know within it you know we got a great new york times you know hit that came out uh, digitally a few days ago. And I literally just came from driving all over LA trying to find a New York Times <laughs> and bought seven copies. I didn't realize newspapers cost that much money nowadays. <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, I thought it was like 50 cents, you know? <laughs> but, you know, to, to get those sort of what I call bumps, you know, here and there, you just go, hopefully this keeps us more energized to keep doing the work. So when people, you know, to, to try and answer a question more effectively, when people, unless they're completely off mark somewhere, I allow people to arrive at how they arrive at us. Hmm. It's the same way of curating a show. I may, you know, I'm a storyteller with curating. However, if somebody comes into the space and decides to go to chapter nine before starting at chapter one, that's okay. Hmm. I, I want them to feel compelled 
and pulled in whatever direction that their spirit moves them in because I don't want to control the narrative. Yeah. You know, all I know is when, when, I, when you put your intention into it and you know what you're doing, you know why you're doing it, then the rest of it just is what it is. You know, every once in a while you may, you know, have what I call creative tension with someone. And sometimes, you know, both parties can't figure it out in the same way. And, you know, I, I want to go, let's just get on the phone. Let's just meet in person or whatever. And then sometimes people, they just want to know, I just want to stay mad and I want to stay in this space and whatever. I just go, you know what? I, I, I don't, you know, I'm not that person, you know, uh, nothing in life is permanent for me except when they close that casket, you know? So, so I'm, I'm here for different reasons than I think, you know, despite all of our good press and, you know, um, I don't want to call it notoriety, but, you know, just exposure mm -hmm. and all that, you know, you know, like I said, this work is too hard to endure it the way that we have for it to be something loftier. Like you have to, uh, for myself, you know, I just know that there's, there's so much purpose in this man. And, you know, there are times I don't even understand it, you know, mm -hmm. But you just go, you know what? This is work I believe in. These are people that I believe in. And, you know, I pull up to this big ass expensive building, you know, when I do. And I just, I start with thank you. I start with thank you. And then walk inside and wait for something to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> Gratitude is, is, a, is a big piece of it. And, you know, as I was sharing with you sort of be, before we got started in earnest is that, you know, you kind of, I kind of set through these goals of what I want to look through for the course of the year and just kind of constantly progressing and not getting sort of that feedback of this person said this was good or what I'm doing is good and really being aligned with why I'm doing what I'm doing or why I put this time in it. Cause you know, it's also, I shared before we, we got into it, it's, it's not necessarily a cash cow per se, but it is something that I think has a lot of value and it equips me with the opportunity to you know, satisfy my curiosity, but also maybe the curiosity of listeners and be able to connect with folks that, you know, are super talented, that are super knowledgeable. It's like that, that saying, when you're not the, uh, the smartest person in a room, go to a different room. Yeah. It's like, I'm always able to go into a new room and build it up my, my thing. And, you know, it, it's just something about that, something about having, you know, those, those opportunities and seeing what that value is, but it can be those moments where, it feels discouraging. It can be those moments where it's just like this, this is a lot. And it is those moments when you're sharing something. I'll, I'll share this with you. Um, like, I, I think where I sit is somewhere between journalism and art and the way that I approach what I do. And I remember having to really do the clenched jaw thing. Um, I was at a, an award uh, thing and I'm being acknowledged for a substantial grant that I got to fund most of the season. And after I did my speech, I had one of the artists, they wanted to find artist types, tell me like, I don't know why you think you're an artist. You're not an artist. And it was just like immediate sort of like, you're trying to, trying to bring me down. And, and it was just a really weird take. And I didn't feel discouraged at that moment, but I definitely took inventory of it and I remembered it. And it's always trying to like figure out where your spot is at and all of these different things that play a role in like what one might look like, where one is from and sort of what that scene looks like. And in being in a place that is um, primarily of a majority and having to speak with them about how great the work I was doing, amplifying folks that look like me and you. So it was a very, it's a very interesting sort of period. And that was definitely a challenge as to as I'm growing and doing more things and getting that sort of exposure, I now have to combat that. Whereas probably when we previously talked, that wasn't a thing. So I, I don't know. It's just something that I just take inventory of. Well, you know, um, and I appreciate you sharing that. I, I was thinking as you started talking about this, that, you know, what you're also doing is anthropological, mm -hmm. you know, you know, so, and, and to me that, marries the journalism with the art as well to me that's like the offspring of both of those you know that that you really are you know 
delving in and unearthing and like really getting, you know, hopefully to the heartbeat of people so that other people can experience, you know, experience it in the forms that, you know, you shared and make it available, you know, to other people. And there's so much worth in it. There, there just is there, you know, we, we have this new technology and or accessible technology. And if we're not using it, then, you know, shame on us. Yeah. It, it, and thank you. It, Cause it is, it is that thing where as I was watching this documentary earlier when I was in the barbershop, as you can see, I'm blazed up right now. <laughs> I, I was watching this documentary and, and, and we were talking about sort of how history changes and it's like this is common knowledge you know no no it's not like this is now not what we're discussing we've actually rebranded what this story is and i think a lot of times when stories that come from communities that we come from that feature folks that look like us those stories are changed when it becomes something that is a money maker when it becomes something that's an economic driver and i think being able to do as you were touching on like you know who who else is going to do it you know, um, and what I'm doing and archiving this, I would imagine, you know, the interview that we did two years ago should not be the same as this interview. I shouldn't be saying, so I really like your work. Tell me more about it. You know, it, it should be something that's a bit richer and is something that is a good accompaniment to that, that first one. And it, but people should, to your point, be able to get something out of it from the heart of that conversation and the sort of thinking that goes into the work and to the the documenting of the work. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to think that, you know, that these serve as, you know, not just resources, but as, you know, their own, you know, classes, if you will. I don't want to call it master class, but, you know, their own classes in which, you know, you gleam various things from, you know, people from, you know, different disciplines, you know, within the work where you really sort of you just get to tap in and you, you really it's it's like it's like reading biographies of well-known successful you know however you you know uh characterize but you know you, you much like reading those biographies you read and understand what people have gone through to get to where they got to and you just go man you know, everyone has a story, yeah. you know, you know, I, I don't know of anybody that just, you know, woke up with it being easy and it just remained easy, just their entire existence. And that whole thing It's like, no, you know, we went through some shit and, you know, we arm wrestled and battled and did all these things. But we but we still we we knew to some degree what we were working toward and why, yeah. you know. You know, you want something greater from all of this and you and and hopefully you want it for other people. And hopefully somehow this becomes a little um, easier or more manageable for, you know, the next generation behind us at the same time that, you know, that, you know, I got a nine year old daughter now that, you know, is absorbing and has been absorbing everything since day one anyway. But um, but from that perspective and younger artists and, you know, and that's why I really try. I really work toward making myself accessible um, to other people, because so often they don't have the accessibility or um, look, I'm overextended, but I end up having these conversations with people almost every single day because there's a need there. Yeah. You know, people walk, people walk into the booth, a couple of them. I was like, do they know about my other platform? Because my man was like, and, and the sister who was a psychotherapist is now we got to talk. And they were like, I need to talk to you. They were like, it's not. They were like, yeah, one brother was like, yeah, I'm an artist and all that. But he goes, brother, I need to talk to you. And I knew what that meant. And I was going, you know what? There's something else going on. And, you know, I'm not a therapist or anything like that, but I got my life's experiences and, you know, I think I have, uh, you know, a few things to offer somebody and I have a vocabulary of a certain level of understanding that I can, you know, communicate with somebody, you know, even if it's then leading them to someone else. Yeah. But, you know, so often we're just moving through this and we're, we're winging it, we're winging it and, you know, we don't want to wing it. 
I, I want to comment on that real quick before I move to this next question. Um, definitely, you know, this, this notion of sort of supporting like who's going to come up. Right. And, you know, I, since we last talked, I've been able to delve into the education sphere around like podcasting and around like content and creativity. And, um, currently I, I'm an educator at the, um, at a Baltimore school for the arts and that's been really cool. And, um, and my, my partner, she was just like, oh, hmm, how, I'm going to start calling you Mr. Lee. And I was like, look, <laughs> and as soon as they did, I was like, damn, that she's right. I am a teacher. And, <laughs> and ultimately seeing like someone who, who looks like them that's from sort of their same or similar or relatable sort of upbringing and being able to, as you, you touched on, having a, having lived experience, having a vocabulary and, you know, pretty much knowing this thing, but also presenting it in a way like, no, you should be able to do this. You can do this. This is simple. And, um, you know, it was definitely something to learn and something to do and something to grow in. And yeah, I, absolutely. When, you know, that came about, I was overextended, very overextended, but I saw sort of the value in, you know, and I, and everything is almost a bit for me, but it's like, learn from my mistakes. I've made all of them in this area. So here, this can be a bit easier for you, and it's very accessible. It's a very low barrier to entry. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do this or that your creativity doesn't matter or what have you. And those moments when you see what you're saying is getting through, that's so fulfilling. That is so fulfilling. No doubt. No doubt. If, if, if someone... If you are that swayed for someone to tell you that you can't do something and you don't believe that you can do it, you won't do it. You know, and I, I'm here to and I challenge artists and other people with that. I go, is it going to stop you if, if someone tells you no? Is it going to stop you from actually doing it? No. Wonderful. Great. Even if even if you're submitting to us and, you know, we can't get back to you whenever because, you know, there's a lot going on or or if I tell an artist like, hey, you know, I don't I don't really feel like your work is, you know, the right tone for what we're showing right now or what we plan on or we have too much of this or something. You know, don't be in, don't be this. I hope you won't be discouraged by it. I want you to be fired up by it and be like, you know what? Fuck that. I can I'm gonna go somewhere else. I'm, I'm put it up myself. I'm gonna do, you know, whatever. But it's like, no, you know. If you've got something for yourself and you take ownership of it, man, you know, fire away with it for real. That, that, you know? that is that is my energy. That is that is, that is my energy. It's so like, look, tell me no. Mm -hmm. I, I remember talking to a funder about this project I wanted to do, and and they were kind of making it seem like they had more say. And I was like, look, I can do this without you. This is a courtesy, if anything. And they were like, <laughs> oh, I was like, excellent, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I want to get this take on you. And this is a little weightier, I think, of a of a question. But so I, I was sharing with you earlier about the the documentary. Um, I think before we got started, the documentary around like sort of black art, right? So I wanted to get your take on sort of the current state of of black art and conversations around black artistic expression. Um, and like, what have you observed, like just from your view, your viewpoint over the last like five years? So that's inclusive of sort of pre pandemic pandemic and like this stage of pandemic. Because I will always say there's a pandemic going until someone tells me there's not. Um, and I think that includes sort of this trajectory of people talking more about art from black artists or. Um, since since you know George Floyd and all of that sort of like arc of times, so I think that five year period is a nice chunk. So I just want to get sort of your take around the discourse and around like how it's discussed. I suppose. Um, tricky question. Um, no, I've been having this conversation often with people as well. I I think one, I think figurative artists in particular have to be a little bit more mindful of the work that they're creating. I think that I feel like there's a sense of, and I could be way off on this. I just feel like there's a sense of passive image making. Mm. I feel like, I feel like some people have gotten very lazy with painting. And I think that, 
they're looking for the quick route to just creating and selling right away and trying to cash in on, you know, what had been a major uptick in black figurative work. And I see that tide has been shifting, you know, over the past year and a half, close to two years now. And I've spoken to, you know, several curators and gallerists about this, you know, you know, the George Floyd and Black Lives Matter impact, you know, um, brought a heightened sense of awareness to Black figurative painters. And, you know, let's just be honest about it. You know, every white collector, for whatever their various reasons to collect or acquire this Black figurative work, you know, whether it was to feel a sense of supporting or taking advantage of uh, a moment or dealing with their own white tears, you know, regarding some of it at the same time. And, you know, I, I, and I want to be respectful of, of every version of that um, uh, in, in saying so. But everyone has sort of collected the majority, you know, it's like, it's like you feel a sense of, oh, we did that, mm -hmm. you know, from, from a lot of people. And so what it has done now, it's made it a little bit more of a challenge for some of those artists who, whose practice isn't as sharp as others. So it's making the distinction a lot broader between, you know, really good, imaginative, thought-provoking new work and just creating something that's on the hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. And so I think what it's now doing, it's shifting a bit of the focus to more, you know, expressionistic work, abstract works, um, textiles, you know, people are finding new forms and new ways of, you know, creating specifically figurative work, but then there's, you know, these other medium that, that collectors are starting to get a little bit more savvy about as well. And, you know, while these forms have, you know, existed, you know, forever, I think that there's just a level of, a different level of sophistication or a different level of, of mindfulness that people are looking at now because, you know, they've collected a lot of figurative works, black, white people, everybody. Yeah. And so, I, you know, and I have people that say, yeah, I'm looking around and I got all these eyes staring at me. Or I got all this energy of all these, you know, souls or whatever, and I need something to, you know, so I, I just think that I lost my train of thought of what originally what was the original question? I mean, you I you, you were over there cooking though. <laughs> <laughs> um, just 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 sort of your your thoughts on the the, the state of like black. Yeah, I, I, I just I just yeah, I just think that you know we we owe it to ourselves to really continue to evaluate the work that we're doing, mm -hmm. and also I think that we have to be open or more open to constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there, there was a time, you know, whether it was um, Spiral or, you know, other groups, and I'm sure there are collectives out there now, but I, I think, you know, we have to let down some of our ego and, you know, not go on social media and want to blast somebody just because, you know, they didn't love their work. Mm -hmm. But I think that there needs to be a window or a space in which, you know, we can really grapple with, you know, material and ideas and thoughts and have a little bit of a challenge within their of trusted, you know, folks within your tribe. Mm -hmm you know, to be able to talk about the work. And I, I don't, I don't know. I feel like there's, um, I don't, I don't know if there's a lot of space for that right now. I feel like a lot of uh, artists are, yeah, just let me do my thing. And, you know, and you got to let them do their thing. Thank you. That, that is, um, 
we're on, we're, we're we're here. We're here. <laughs> okay. So thank you for that. Um, you know, my, my my thing always at the end of the day, man, is look. I want I want to see everybody win. So when I say things, you know, and this isn't a disclaimer, you know, but when I say things to artists or I go into their studios and I'm challenging thought or bringing up something, it's really because I want their highest good. I'm not creating the work, but I see so much work that it creates a better context for me to even discuss work. You know, so when I do comment on someone's portfolio or something like that, it's not to be like, you know, it's like, no, man, go back and do the homework, go back and do the work, like really wrestle with this shit, because I want you to be great yeah. for yourself. Now, it ain't got nothing to do with us. I, I want you to just get in there and, and, and do this thing. So that way, at the end of the day. You can look back on your body of work or, you know, what you've done or what you've achieved, what you've left as legacy, whatever, whatever the benchmarks, ideas and thoughts are for you, but that you feel good about it for yourself, first and foremost, you know, before letting someone else determine a certain value uh, of purpose, you know, within your work. But if you're doing everything that you can, if you're working that hard if you're wrestling and you're studying and you're you know taking the steps you know tommy mitchell baltimore based artist it's easy to talk about tommy because tommy is working every single day and with each body of work from over the past five or six years that i've worked with tommy Every body of work supersedes the previous. And I always think there's no way in hell he can top <laughs> what he did previously. And I'm telling you, there are ways in which I can't think that he can top his previous body of work. And he does it every single time. And it's because whether he's traveling or whatever, Tommy's got a small canvas with him, whatever he can pack in a bag somewhere, he's in his hotel room. He's doing two things every single day. He's shooting buckets on a basketball court in any city, anywhere in the world. And he's and he's drawing every single day. And to me, he's already really good, but this is what's ultimately gonna make him a great artist because he has a discipline mm -hmm in a way. And then Tommy and I will talk, you know, we talk about themes, ideas, bodies of work, this and that, and, you know, and then he'll take some things. And, you know, even if, you know, I'm going to say, ah, you know, I think you could do without this. He goes, all right, well, let me try something else. So, but I, I just love that the, the sort of rapport that we have is really one of love yeah. and one that we trust one another, you know, like, I, 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 with several artists, I, I can go in and just say, hey, man, I think you should stop right there. Mm -hmm. And it's the why. And we'll hammer it out. I, I got this other artist I work with. He goes, you're the Gil Evans to my Miles Davis. I said, all right, well, I got to be the white one, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, we laugh about it. But, but when you think about two artists in their different discipline or from the different points of view, the composer, the painter, that sort of thing, you go, you know what? We are what I am working toward is each artist's highest vibration for themselves. That frequency that is so elevated that they radiate, mm -hmm. you know, through their paintings. That's that's what I want for all these, all of them. Seriously. Wow. Like I said, you were cooking. <laughs> I I appreciate that and thank you. Uh, it's you know I, I I relate to it from from this this vantage point a lot. Um, when you know I'm very aware and respectful of this is a lot of times the first time someone has actually asked someone about their work, had them on to talk about their work. I don't want someone looking like an ass on here. So um, I try to go out of my way to like, are you good with this? Do you, do you, can I send this to you to listen to you beforehand? Because I'm coming from it from this standpoint and, you know, really just trying to put them in their best spot to, to thrive and, and, and do really well in it and really show themselves in their best light. And that, that's really what the, the focus is. And, you know, that's, that's, that's really what it is. And I find like at times some folks aren't really, 
you know, they, they like certain elements of the lifestyle, perhaps, but not actually doing the thing. And when I talk to people, as I was talking about earlier, being an educator, I always have some recording device with me. I always have my thing with me because it's like I am a podcaster, I'm not a marketing person. I'm not someone that just does this. This is what I do. And, you know, check the credentials. That's, that's sort of the, the the vibe. And, you know, when I see people, I see someone pull out a sketch pad, they have a few minutes. I was like, all right, I rock with what you're doing. You're really into this. And, you know, that's 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 a thing for me. Um, So I got um, I got some rapid fire questions and then like one sort of like final question I'm going to say for after the rapid fire. So if you will indulge me, we can go into them. What's up? What's up? All right. Um, so this this is the the first one. Um, it's, it might be a little bit longer than rapid fire, but I at least want to throw it out. Um, so we we have this sort of ever changing landscape in arts, media, culture, all of that stuff as to you know how we're looking about looking at things, how we're discussing things, and what's at the forefront. How do you stay adaptable and innovative amidst these changes? Um, and, and and I'll just chime in, be giving you a time to kind of process and think through it. Um, I find that it's always we're always returning to to things that existed. So I find myself going back to old audiobooks and just listening to like, oh, this is the history around this. The same sort of style this person was working in or their approach to their creative practice. This has been we've seen this before. We we've we've done this before and we're doing a sort of different version of it, but the the framework is very similar. So I have that as a sort of relatable point when I'm talking to someone, I suppose. So being able to dive back into like old text, doing the research that you touched on a moment ago, I think that helps me because I think we always are encountering just different shades of familiar things. So for you, how do you stay like kind of like in the know, adaptable and innovative? How, how do you stay kind of like up to up to snuff? You know, I'll be honest. I'm not convinced that I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just just like for real. I just, you know, and I, I tell this even of like my associates and things that, you know, come and do things. I said, listen, I have a way of doing things that I am thoroughly convinced is not the smartest way to do it. So I say, I'm going to show you how to do something. I'm going to lead you somewhere. And then one or two times, but then take ownership of it for yourself. You know, like, like really, you know, find the version and then hell, teach me. And so even with one of my associates that, you know, came to Miami with this, we were installing and I kind of uh, overshot uh, dimensions a little bit to include two other paintings. So I asked Dylan, I said, Dylan, what do you think? And she started doing this and moving things around. And, you know, what if we do this over here? And I was like, you know what? I said, bet, let's, let's go with that because I don't have, uh, we all have some ego. I don't have that much ego that I have to put my name on everything. I just want it to be the best version that it can be. So I even told Dylan, I said, you just earned your stripes on this one. You're you're now you're now a co-curator or whatever. She was like, what? I was like, it's that simple. I said, you know, and I said, I appreciate because I asked her why, the whys and everything. She came with it from there. So when I look at the broader thing, man. I'm a lot more analog than these digital cats, you know, you know, I go out and see other people's stuff and my buddy, you know, Rick Garcon from resident residency, Art gallery, he has a wonderful program um, that I love, you know, amplifying every chance I get um, some other wonderful people out there doing some great things. Um, and, you know, I'm constantly trying to answer that question to myself, like, how can I be better? How can we be better? You know, there's some other things that I'm sort of working on that are much more, they bring more value to band devices than me just sitting here in the gallery. Yeah. So by me being out in these streets, if you will, you know, seeing people, spending time with people, having these type of conversations and more, that's really where my learning 
that that's really where I'm getting my education these days is listening to other people going out in other places and, and experiencing other stuff. And, you know, you see enough stuff, you see enough, you begin to form new ideas about things. And that's my experiential version is how, you know, that's working for me. Thank you. Wow. It's good. It's really good. Um, where usually it's when, but I want us to ask it as where, where do you feel most inspired? Two places, uh, probably in meditation. Hmm. And then I said, I said a lot of time just sitting and thinking just a, a lot. I like at night I'll get in the bed and I'll just sit there for three or four hours, just virtually no light on maybe just from the street outside or something like that. You know, I may have like some high frequency stuff playing or now Andre 3000 or <laughs> something like that. And just like really just just allowing the wavelengths of, of things just to take me places um, because, you know, I really see a lot before it happens. I just I just do. I think we talked about this previously, but, you know, I have a. My, my visionary thing is really strong. And so I see it in front of me and then I go, okay, well now what's the pathway to get there? You know, and the other part is when work comes in and, you know, I'm curating and putting the show together and then I'll go home that night and I'll dream about it. And then it sometimes recalibrates, you know, uh, or, or 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 reconfigures, you know, the show or something. Or it might be that one painting that's just stubborn and it's just, you know, whatever. And then just something will reveal itself at a wake, you know. And this has been happening to me for uh, consciously probably 10 or 12 years. Oh, no, about 15 years. Wow. Yeah. So like, like I, I try not to force anything. It's like, I, you know, I, I like to, I like to let it reside. And then I, I like to let creativity talk to itself. And then I kind of like stand back and it's like, and that, that I think that's what those really private moments are. It's like me working at listening to everything everywhere so this this is this is the last rapid fire one before we go into this this last real question which is more of a wrap-up question um so we we have different things that um I, I think some people have like uniforms right they always have a thing like I, I was interviewing a um dude recently and uh he's a he's a comic artist and he's like my aesthetic is just round glasses and tom waits hats at this point and he was like, that's all I own. And I was like, that's amazing. And he draws himself to look like that. So it's literally his avatar. Is there an item from your your clothing or from your accessories that you're like, no, this is absolutely my thing? All the time. You will probably see this scarf in particular in almost every photo that I shoot. But my team gives me a heart. They joke with it, but because I call it my Linus blanket. But And I was put on right beforehand. And then I've gone from hot to cold back and forth. But I literally have a scarf, a neckerchief, a bandana, something on every single day or whatever. And it's 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 my comfort. It's my comfort piece. It's it if anybody were to say, what's that singular piece of clothing or something all the time, it's gonna be a scarf. That's a that's a great answer. I've I've been trying to do it. I try to do the neck the, the neckerchief thing, or I have like, you know, just something super pretentious. And I'm like, this yeah. is gonna be my fit. This is gonna be my aesthetic. And yeah. I just don't commit to it. I just forget it. I'll have it in my pocket and just never put it on. Yeah, the sister I'm seeing now, she keeps getting on. She's like, babe, I want to see your collarbone. She's like, your collarbone is like my fav favorite part of your body and all that. Stop wearing these things around your neck. I'm like, it's my thing. That's what she got me wearing sneakers now and stuff. You know, I was wearing boots forever. She, you know, babe, you got to get you some white sneakers. I was like, yo, okay, fine. Let's, let's do sneakers now. So, you know, I'm, 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 open, I'm open to trying some things. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so this is this is sort of the the last real thing, and I, I wanted to save this one to to go into it now. Um, 
you know, pretty much what, what's on the forefront, what's, what's coming soon. I, I see, you know, as you, you touched on a little bit earlier, uh, Geffen Playhouse, that the initiative you, you, you've talked about a little bit, I think in maybe on it, on a LinkedIn, I think I see in the bio, it's a Ted talk, maybe on the horizon. So talk a bit about, um, sort of what's next for you, whether it be acting, creative pursuit, band devices, you know, sort of what have you. Um, I'm writing a book right now. Uh, which I've been working on for about 14 years. Um, so I hope I and I expect to have it the first version of it completed by October. Um, we have this initiative called In the Paint with the Lakers. Um, so you know we've gone through the selection process, this and that. We found the artists. We've chosen the grantees. We've chosen the exhibitors. The Lakers literally. Um, tomorrow are handing over their final list of the nine or 10 works that they're purchasing, some by players, some by the organization. Then we got to wait to hear from their sponsors. Um, I'm in the final quarter of, uh, as a creative director for Geffen Playhouse and an art initiative they have over there called Art Lives Here. And um, um, I was told that my participation this year um, brought an 800% increase in the past two years. So that was really humbling. Uh, so I, I I expect to be invited back <laughs> <laughs> for that, but we'll see. And, and really, man, uh, what I'd like for the gallery for Band of Vices is to focus less on exhibitions in the space and to do more things outside uh, of it in other fairs, other demographics, because, you know, there's a lot of value in now. And, you know, we we sort of have like a cornerstone, like a benchmark here of, you know, a good understanding. And it's important now for us to get out and get our digital footprint out there and in and, and a visceral way in front of people and to really communicate like this a little bit more, because, you know, that has the most value to it. Um, I think for us now. And so my goal is for us to really explore that more. And then just independently, while still using the name, I'm in contact with about three other galleries right now um, and exhibiting partners, uh, New York, Dallas, and Baltimore um, about, about um, curating in those spaces um, for next year. And and that I'm really excited about as well. Like, like my, you know, the work that I've done here in the gallery, I'm highly proud of. However, I'm ready for someone else to come in and do more of that now. You know, I'm, you know, I don't need to curate every show. I don't need to have my name on all of whatever. I do it out of necessity. But, you know, it will bring more excitement for me to have other creatives coming in excuse me, to have other creatives come in and really activate, you know, the space in in ways that are much more imaginative, much more creative, and probably a, a little bit more at the forefront. <laughs> than, you know, the work that I've done, like I said, brother, I have no ego, you know, you, you do what you you do, what you know, you do what you understand. But you know, until someone tells you differently, you just keep doing that thing. Um, but that's also why it's been helpful for me to get out into other places and spaces as well, because then I see things that I go, I absolutely want to do some version of that, or I love what they did there. There's no way in hell I can compete <laughs> with that right there, but I just love it. And, you know, because I sort of am where I am in this space of what I've been doing for the time that I've been doing, it's just been really, really important for me to really let other people not shine, but just to um, acknowledge them, yeah. you know, and to be like, man, you know, I really love what you're doing. You know, I really, you know, I really believe in you. And hey, if it just, you know, let's work on this thing right here, tweak this thing, that whole thing, you know, other things with other people or whatever. Because again, man, I, I just want to, I just want to see people like thrive, you know, and I want people, I want people to be like, there was that, I had somebody behind me. There was somebody that 
had my front and my back. There was somebody that, you know, if I posted something that sounded weird, they may call me and say, hey, man, take that down. <laughs> or what's going on? You know, checking in, you know, like like in real ways, because I think that's just something that we just sort of take for granted. And we just also I just we never know what's going on with other people. And I, I think from that mental health standpoint, it's really important to check in with people and see where they're at, because, you know, you may you may touch on something that may either help ignite or shift something in their work. But more importantly, if it heals something in their heart. And that's, you know, that's ultimately what, you know, I want for all of us. I want us to have healed hearts. That, you know? that absolutely comes through. And, you know, I always go back and think of both certain moments in this sort of podcast journey. And, and I still feel so pretentious saying it, but it is what it is. Um, I, I remember when we did the first interview and I kept, I, I, you know, sort of the confidence thing and just really trying to find that place. And it's always a certain degree of that in, in doing this. But I, I remember one of the things that you you got over to me, you said to me, you were like, you know, stop saying try. He's like, you're doing it, brother. And I was just, and I always reference that because I was like, I'm just, you know, doing, doing this and I, I know my lane and I'm good in what I'm, what I'm doing, but having someone with that sort of acknowledgement, someone that's in that level and having that, that name and that background and all of that stuff, it's just, it's, it's rewarding. And it also feels like really sort of empowering. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, I've carried that with me. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I heard you say it right before you said this too. <laughs> I heard it again, and I heard it, whenever I hear myself, I always try and back it up, and I always work towards backing it up and you know using something else. This sister and his brother came into the booth the other day in Miami, and just engaging with them, and they were just excited and young and that whole thing. And we were talking, and I said, "So what?" It, I said, "So what's next? Where, where are y'all going after this?" She goes. Oh, I guess tomorrow, you know, we got to go to scope. I said, you get to go to scope. Mm -hmm. And she, it went. <laughs> and she was like, oh my God. She was like, thank you. She goes, and it just, you know, it, those are the things for me that that little shift, that little tweak somewhere that just gets us all thinking a little bit differently yeah somewhere just from an energetic thing and the the fact that she then took ownership of it and so she was like oh my god that's not you're so right because and i was like it's all good sis it's all good i said but but, but you get to go i said enjoy it i said enjoy it you know so you know that for me is like the ethos of i really i know i keep saying it but it's really how i just carry all of this stuff and work work toward all of it it's just Every day going, you know, what can I do to be more of a contributor? What more can I do to lend a voice, lend some support, tell somebody you love them, hit somebody like, I love this piece. I, and if these aren't artists that I work, you know, I'll be hitting people left and right all over the place like, yo, I love this work right here. Or you graduated with this piece. <laughs> like that. And it makes people feel good. And people are like, oh, my God, I didn't even know you were like, like, you know, I mean, I don't know if you know Daisha Board Gallery out of out of Dallas. It's sisters, I just love her. And I met her last year in Miami. And as soon as I walked into prison, she was like, oh, my God, this and this and that. And she was like, I'm day. I was like, you're Daisha Board, this and that. And I like told her, I was like, I love the last three shows that you just did. I'm telling her about. Play and she's like, I can't believe, you know, everything about my gallery. And I said, I said, I may not have had a chance to share it yet. I said, but I love what you're doing. I love what you stand for. I love who you're working on behalf of this and that. I love these particular artists in here. And I'm excited to see this artist's work. And she was just so like enamored with it. And, you know, I tell her, like I tell everyone else, just pay it forward. That's, I think that's, I think that's where we close. I mean, you, you, you wrapped it like right there. I like that. Um, and 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 thank you for for all of this. Um, this has been great to reconnect and and, and do this pod. And um, you know, again, thanking you. And I want to invite and encourage you to share with the listeners, website, social media, all of that good stuff, so they can find out. You know, sort of that shameless plug portion. The floor is yours. 
No, 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 no. We, we, we will make sure that happens, no doubt. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to make sure that that they uh, are aware of the first one <laughs> as well, so that maybe they got some context that maybe I'll go back and learn something new as well. And there you have it, folks. I want to again thank Terrell Telford for coming on to the podcast. And I'm Rob Lee saying that there's art, culture and community in and around your neck of the woods. You've just got to look for it.